Hey, so I'm making my first girder front end from scratch. And from all the research I did, I could not find very many videos or information about just the like structure of these front ends. And um, there seems to be a lot more out there about springers, which uh, I had originally thought I was going to do, but I just really fell in love with the design of the girders. So I thought I would make some videos about it and uh, see if anybody out there has any interest in learning about these with me. So I started off with this raw material that I ordered. And uh, the first thing I made was the upper yoke. I made that with this block of aluminum and just marked up the holes that I wanted, hacked it up, put it in my lathe, and here you can see me facing one side of it. The specs on this were really important for the tolerances that I need so that the end result is tight but operates smoothly. Once I got it blocked out like this, I was able to mock it up onto the bike and make sure that you know, my gap and my distances were set right and I was able to tighten the upper yoke down. Once that was confirmed, I started shaping. Now, shaping this, I did mostly with my um, drill press and it was not a great tool to use, but it did the job. So after a lot of sanding and shaping, this was the end result and I'm pretty happy with it. You can see here, it's a really snug fit. Now I did that for both the upper and the lower because the aluminum can have a tendency to gall when you press steel through it. And I didn't want that to happen to this. So I machined my stem holes to be a slight press fit to the point where I can just heat it up with a torch and it'll drop right in. And then when it cools down, it shrinks around the stem and creates a nice tight fit. Now this upper yoke was complicated because I had to make the shock mount for it too. So that's what's cut out there in the middle. It was also really important that I made the sides of this be exactly four and a half inches across, given the dimensions that I'm working with and perfectly parallel and flat for the bearings and bushings to be able to glide freely along them. Shaping this lower yoke wasn't so bad. Um, pretty much all I had to do was a bunch of cuts with an angle grinder and then sanded it down and hit it with the belt sander to get it nice and smooth. I'm really happy with that, how that turned out. So now I'll move on to these three piece pivot arms that I made, the upper and lower, and they're almost identical. I took some flat bar and cut it down welded it together and uh, used these annular cutters that I cannot recommend highly enough. Chucked up in my lathe tail stock uh, so that I could drill through and get a very accurate hole across the left to right side of the bike. So here you can get acquainted with my lathe a little bit. It's an old South Bend uh, Heavy 10. I got it pretty recently. It was a bit of an upgrade from my last uh, Atlas that I had for a long time and I am so in love with this lathe. It's so smooth, it cuts great. I love the auto feed. And actually this project was my first opportunity to uh, start practicing cutting threads. But one last thing about these holes that I'm cutting, I, uh, I undersized them with the annular cutter and then bored them out because I learned early that the, uh, the needle bearings I'm using, it's easy to deform them with too tight of a press. So they're basically just push in tight. I went with needle bearings on this build because theoretically they should work better than bushings. I'm sure some would argue that, they, that the bushings can be just as good and that might be true, but I just wanted to try needle bearings. And then I jigged everything up and started to weld these. It was really challenging because it wanted to warp. Even just the, the fraction of a thousandth that it was warping, was making the bearings bind across the shaft. And so it took me a while to get it jigged up rigid enough to be able to weld it and have it be close enough to still work smoothly. So this is how I ended up jigging the pivot arms to be able to weld them together. Even then I had to do a little bit of correcting after removing all of the jig parts and cleaning them up because they just ever so slightly wanted to pinch inward. Okay, well now that we're all caught up on how I made the big stuff, let's just sit back and watch me assemble this thing. Okay, and now we got something to work with here. So first thing that I wanna look for is to make sure that it can pivot all the way around smoothly and doesn't bind at any point. I always like to give it a little wiggle test just to make sure it doesn't bind, um, but you don't want any side to side play there. Next, I'll assemble the forward pivot where the legs are gonna weld to. This here is the spacer that I'll weld the legs to and uh, I machined each of those, all four of them 
to be as close in dimension as possible and be a nice slip fit for the bearings. I also had to make a uh, spacer there in the middle uh, to go between the bearings just to make sure that they, they don't wander around inside the sleeve. Oh, a uh, spacer escaped. Okay, put that back in place. And then I get both of those needle bearings on and realize we have a hole in our glove. No worries, quick fix, all good. Okay, now rinse and repeat for the next one. And you'll see I already did that for the other two that I'll install later on the top. And you'll see once I'm done, these little sleeves here, these will spin freely on the bearing shaft and make for a smooth pivoting action whenever I weld legs to them. Okay, I'm gonna get out of the way here again and finish assembling this lower yoke. Okay, that's all there is to it. Now you can see how nice those leg pivots are gonna spin and importantly, don't have any side-to-side -side play. So now I can officially set the lower yoke aside and work on the upper. There's not really anything new to explain about the upper, so let's just see how that comes together. Okay, so now the yokes are all put together and I can go assemble them on the bike and show you how far I've gotten with this build so far. Okay, so while I get this thing mounted up here, let me tell you what I'm even working on. This build started as an idea I had a long time ago um, when I noticed that the Honda NT650 Hawk motor looked really similar to the Honda Shadow 600. But I like the NT650 Hawk motor more. Um, it's a, got an extra gear and noticeably more power than the shadow. So I always thought it would be interesting if I could get an NT650 Hawk motor into a shadow frame and build kind of a sporty cruiser bike. I also thought it would be cool if I could get the single-sided swing arm to fit into the Honda shadow frame as well. Now this whole idea started a long time ago before I had nearly as many tools or knowledge at my disposal and at this point I think I'm actually probably going to just build the frame from scratch too but if I do I'll probably still use the stock Honda shadow neck so I'm using the stock stem and building it on the stock frame for now, and then I can decide how I want to do the rest later. Okay, so I got to give a shout out to Metal Malarkey Engineering. They have a website that I got a lot of my girder information from, including an exploded diagram here that I found, which helped give me a good understanding of what I was really designing. I didn't get any official specs from them, but I am loosely basing my design off of theirs. I also have to give a shout out to the Chopper Builders Handbook. That website was a great wealth of information about girders and all of their designs. Um, I learned a lot about the rank angles I needed and how the lengths of the pivot arms and the lengths of the legs actually interact with those things. There's lots of good references on there and I definitely recommend checking out both of their websites. I'll have their links in the description. So that gets us caught up to where I am on the build so far. Uh, this is my first girder to ever make from scratch and actually my first video like this to ever put out I've been building and working on custom bikes for over 10 years now And I just thought it would be cool to put this out here and see if I could maybe connect with some other builders or just people that are into this like me 
Um, if anybody out there has built a girder or is just curious about them, leave me a comment, ask me any questions, or if you see anything that you'd do differently, I'd love to hear your different takes. For the rest of the videos in this series at least, I'm gonna probably make shorter videos that are more detailed about the different steps of the process. So um, feel free to subscribe and uh, follow the rest of this build with me if you're interested. And hey, either way, thanks for checking this out, making it to the end, and thanks for watching.